Tetris is one of the most popular puzzle games of all time. And there's a brand new game on PS4 that takes the blocks from Tetris and combines it with a tower building and physics like game of Jenga. But is this puzzle game worth your time or should you just let the tower collapse and leave it on the ground? Tricky Towers is a puzzle game that uses Tetris blocks to allow you to build big giant towers, or sometimes smaller ones, in order to achieve certain goals before your tower ends up collapsing. There's single player and multiplayer modes, up to four players offline and online, with three distinct styles of play. In single player, you'll tackle 50 levels and they alternate from level to level with the various different styles of each of the stages. Once you complete a certain amount of stages, you'll unlock the next set or the next difficulty of stages and you keep going until you're able to complete all 50 levels in the game. The first kind is a race where you have a strict time limit and your goal is to build up your tower in order to hit the goal line that's above where you start off. You must build the tower high enough and keep it built high enough for at least 3 seconds in order to actually complete the goal. Then there's survival mode where you have three hearts and you'll lose a heart every time one of the blocks ends up falling off screen, but you must use every block that's given to you in order to complete the level. Then there's the mode where you have a certain setup predetermined. You'll get a certain number of blocks that you must use, but you have to pile them and build them on the platform that already exists without going above a certain line. If one block falls or you hit that line, it's game over and you'll have to start the level over again. At the beginning of the game, you'll be able to select which avatar or wizard that you want to use for your gameplay. You'll always be competing against an enemy wizard, which is the one throwing out the blocks during survival or the puzzle-like elements, or whose tower is already built in the race and you have to build it faster than what he ended up doing. The avatars don't give you any distinct or unique powers, they're all going to be able to use the game's various power-ups in the levels. When you're against the computer, random effects from your opponent will happen. Now, they are set to be triggered at certain elements, such as how many blocks you have left or how many blocks that you've already currently used in that particular level, but these can really damage you and really throw you off your game. With powers like giant blocks, turning one of your blocks huge and you'll have to somehow be able to manage it and keep it on the tower. You'll also have your blocks turned into ice and then they will slip and slide everywhere. Each one of these dark magics that the opponent is able to throw at you can really test your patience. And while the enemy is throwing dark magic at you, you can get light magic that can potentially help you. Once you reach a certain line, you will unlock an item, kind of like in a racing kart game where you hit one of those blocks and you end up getting a random item to help you out. That's kind of how it works here. You build the tower high enough, hit a certain line, and you'll be granted access to a power-up. Now some of these include turning a block into a plant-like vine block, and once it ends up hitting the other blocks, it will wrap its vines around it, kind of creating one giant block which can make your tower more steady. You'll also have the ability to create a secondary platform. So let's say your tower is building up and it's about to tumble over. You can use this ability to create a secondary platform and start building off of that instead. Plus it's always going to be a little bit higher than what your tower currently is so it can put you just that little bit ahead so you may be able to finish up the level. And that's what ends up determining how rough and difficult the single player experience ends up being because each level will have the enemy throwing these random black magic spells at you. You'll have some levels where every single block, no matter what you end up using, will have some kind of status effect on it, whether it be ice or whether it be locked up. And if it's locked up, you won't be able to turn it or twist it to be able to put it in any direction. You'll just have to go with what it currently is from wherever it ended up spawning. This is by no means a really easy game. For experts of Tetris, I really think you're going to be able to dive into this game and have an absolute blast trying to figure out each of the puzzle elements and building up that tower in order to complete each of the level goals. If you're someone though who gets easily frustrated at games where you end up making a mistake and have to do the levels over and over and over again, you're probably going to lose your patience quite quickly with Tricky Towers. 
One of the funnest aspects, though, about the game is the multiplayer, as you can play any of the styles of modes in local multiplayer or online against other people or even friends. And this is what allows the playing field to be a little bit more even, because during the online, you get both light and dark magic. Once you activate an item, you'll get a choice of one of two spells. You'll either get a light spell and a dark spell, and you have to pick which one that you want to use. You may have a light one that may bring back a heart during a survival mode that may allow you to stay alive a little bit longer, but at the same time, you may get an ice block spell that you could dish against your opponent and hope that they end up failing before you ended up losing that last heart of your own. There's also three difficulties for each of the match types online and for multiplayer. Like for easy mode of the race, you'll have a shorter distance that you'll have to build a tower. And on normal, it'll be a bit higher. But then when you put in the random ability, what it'll end up having is certain status effects going on at all times during a level. Like a storm brewing that will slowly push blocks off, so you'll have to be battling the wind the whole time. Some blocks that would normally be able to stand straight up will get toppled over over because of the strong storm winds. The modes do work a tiny bit different online. For example, the puzzle mode, instead of having a distinct puzzle that you'll have to build around, instead what you're given is a distinct playing field and every player has the same one, and it's to see who can build the most amount of blocks on top of one another before the time runs out or before everyone ends up hitting the line. And whoever has more blocks piled up and still standing there below the line is the winner, which I think is one of the funner games to end up playing. During the course of me playing, the only time I had any kind of slowdown or lag was online. There was a couple of moments where there was a couple of lag spikes, but I'm sure that was due to the bad connections from the people I was playing more so than the game itself, as there was plenty of times online where I ran into no issues whatsoever, and during single player, no slowdown, no freezing, and no crashing of any sort. While listening to the soundtrack, it reminded me a lot of the Rayman soundtracks, the more recent Rayman games like Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins. Hearing the race theme was such a jaunty, happy tune, it was actually enjoyable to listen to, but as I got more frustrated, that song just started to pound in my head, and I was even coming up with my own lyrics cursing at the game because I was having difficulty being able to complete it, but yet here's this happy song that just never seems to stop. Tricky Powers is available for $14.99 on the PlayStation 4, and honestly, it's a really fun game if you like this style of puzzle game. For those who don't like puzzle games, you're not going to find anything here that's going to really change your mind on the whole genre, but it is a very challenging experience that will probably take you a little bit in order to conquer each of the single player levels, and then there's endless amounts of fun to have online and with multiplayer. So with everything said though, I'm going to be giving Tricky Towers for the PlayStation 4 a 7 out of 10. But anyway guys, that will wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.